Language has multiple relationships to conflict. Sometimes our words create conflict. Sometimes they solve conflict. And sometimes they prevent conflict. One of Hayakawa's main arguments about language is that when language results in disagreement and conflict, there is something linguistically wrong with the speaker, listener, or both. What he means by this is that words, the way we're using them and thinking about them, causes conflict. And once we recognize how language causes the conflict, we can work towards solving it. In this presentation, I'll talk about some beliefs about conflict and the three different types of conflict. First, we'll define conflict as disagreement, struggle, and discord. It occurs when people are interdependent, meaning what one person does or says affects the other. It also occurs when people cannot agree on a way to meet their needs and achieve their goals. Some of the tells or indicators of conflict are verbal expressions, that is, words, and nonverbal expressions, which include things like glares, the silent treatment, eye rolling, etc. Let's look at some common beliefs about conflict. True or false? Conflict can always be avoided. The answer is false. We're all different and we all have different ideas. Hayakawa would tell us that disagreement is inevitable. But understanding the role language plays in the conflict is key to knowing how to resolve it and when to agree to disagree, as in the case of nonsense arguments. True or false, conflict always occurs as the result of misunderstandings. The answer is false. Often it occurs not from a lack of understanding the other person but from differing beliefs or values. True or false? Conflict is always a sign of a poor interpersonal relationship. The answer is false. Conflict can be a hallmark of healthy relationships and free and honest communication. True or false? Conflict can always be resolved. And this answer is false. Some differences are so tense and fixed that people have to agree to disagree. There are three types of conflict. Pseudo, simple, and ego. Pseudo conflict comes from a lack of understanding or a misunderstanding. For example, the following dialogue illustrates pseudo-conflict because the conflict is caused by different understandings of the word store. The first speaker says, let's walk to the store. The second speaker says, it's too far, let's take the car. The speaker number one says, but it's only a block away. And speaker number two replies, oh, you mean the convenience store. I thought you meant the supermarket. Despite the name, simple conflict is not simple at all. It occurs because of different ideas, beliefs, and values. It also occurs because of different goals and perceptions. The following examples all illustrate simple conflict. Example one, you want a cat, your spouse wants a dog. Example two, your manager wants you to save expenses by cutting your staff. Your director wants you to grow revenue by putting more sales reps in the field. Example number three, you think Obama is smart and Romney is stupid. Your best friend thinks Romney has better ideas for running the government. In each of these instances, the participants understand each other, 
but disagree over goals, beliefs, and values. The final type of conflict is ego conflict. This type results when people feel personally attacked. These examples all show conflict resulting from personal attacks. Example 1. We agreed to split things 50-50. You always take my stuff and you never do your share of the chores. Example number 2. Face it, you just can't take constructive criticism. I'm trying to help you out. Example 3. Help me out? You are nothing but a bully. You are not going to boss me around ever again. Example number four. You are such an idiot. You always complain about petty things.